if you just so happen to have clicked a back-to-back -back video of Blooms For You, this is not the same video. We are now in a different episode of Blooms For You, but we're still going to use my Epidendrum Multiforme crossed with Capricornum to say hi, welcome, thank you for being here, and to dedicate this cluster of blooms to everybody that watches this video, leaves a comment, has supported my channel, and is not mentioned in the bloom dedications that I have in store for some subscribers and commenters today. We still have a few more buds to go, but other than that, fully bloomed out, even though a little bit scraggly looking. You might be able to see the curtains in the back. That is a mild, mild breeze compared to what has been going on today and is still going on. I have 35 degrees Celsius in the shade and 20% humidity. And the RO water production is in full swing because I need about 10 liters of water to go around and help the orchids out every two hours so far. We're not done yet, but I'm going to go and take you to the east side, I'm going to pick out the blooms, and then let's talk about them. Let's have a look at them and say thank you to several people personally. Refreshing colors. It's hot. I love it. It's beautiful. I love it too. It also has Tabasco in its name, which I do enjoy as well on the occasion. But this is Phalaenopsis Tabasco Tex. It is my summer bloomer of substance at this point in time because it has so many blooms, even though some are showing signs of something, which I will get to right now. I figured it out. But first of all, for Netral Saja, Netral Saja, I want to give you the next bloom that has just opened. I believe it is the one, two, three, four. It's the fifth one because I lost the first one. But here is my fifth bloom of my Tabasco Tex as she blooms for you. Saying thank you very, very much for your support on my channel, for watching, for your comments, for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Why I mentioned that she is hot is because her spicy fragrance is so refreshing in the summer. I do enjoy sweet and sour, but I also like sweet and spice. And it's a very refreshing citrus, lemony, candy smell. And then it has a little kick of chili right at the end. It's not strong enough to make you want to sneeze, but Tabasco Tex is a very good name for this one. Just because of that little bit of heat at the end. I hope that you can see the bloom despite us being in the shade. Very, very pretty. And I have another bud tucked away there. I thought she was done, but we have number six on the works and if she manages to hold on, we all have a number seven. It is extremely blustery and very, very hot today. And now I understand why this has been happening. I believe it's the happy sap on the buds. If I don't paint them off every once in a while with some clear water while in bud, like, you know, so with a very soft paintbrush, then the happy sap will become crystallized which is not a problem when the bloom has just freshly opened, but you can see that it does take out the tissue if left for too long. So I'm very careful now. If I have time, if I see it on time, I go in and just, you know, give it a little bit of a brush with some plain water and maybe I can save the blooms to last longer because they are long lasting. It's just a shame that they got marked and this one has a little bit on the edge as well. Needless to say, it doesn't take away from any of their fragrance and the color is adorable. I love it. That's why I have not plucked any of the blooms off. They're still stiff and fresh and waxy. So they're staying. I love the pop of color. Netral Saja, my fifth bloom of Phalaenopsis Tabasco Tex. She blooms for you. Thank you very much. I really hope that everything is going well in your part of the world. Ooh! <laughs> Stephen's orchid. Boo! How does this not look like Caspar? I'm actually wondering 
If this is not the Jomelia aborescence, but it's something else because there is another orchid called similar and is called Caspar. Stevens orchids, I've got my first bloom of Jomelia, according to my label, aborescence, in bloom for you. This is going to be a really special little bloom cycle this year, unfortunately. Not all the buds are open, but from one bloom last year, I have one, two, three, four more buds to go. These blooms are not very long lasting, otherwise I would wait to show you the orchid while she has more blooms going. But with this exceptionally dry air and wind, as delicate as she looks, that is how she is, and she's gonna dry out pretty, pretty quickly. But isn't this just the cutest? I already call this orchid Caspar because of the little ghost features. <laughs> or octopus, like with Nemo, when the little octopus at the fish school was, oh, I got inked. I don't know if that is something that you enjoy, but some of these Disney movies or Pixar movies, they have some sayings I just can't unhear and I repeat them often. <laughs> So, not that I got inked Stephen's orchids, but my first Jomelia bloom here from Arborescence, according to the label, has opened. And before she goes over and I lose the opportunity to give you your own little Caspar here in southern Spain, I want to dedicate this bloom to you. The bloom is ever, ever so tiny. And no, I don't have shaky hands. Very, very difficult to film. And she is beautifully, beautifully fragrant at night with a very mild, mild fragrance of jasmine. It's very subtle, very mild. Small bloom like this, look at that spur. Yeah, there's not much exuding out of her. I can't even tell if she's in focus, to be honest with you. And I'm hoping that she is, because that would be dumb, wouldn't it? Giving you a dedication and you can't even see the bloom in its full detail. So I honestly thought I had already lost the first spike, and I did, but it pushed out another spike lower than where it should have started. So I should have had a pair right here. You can see the pair going on here. I probably won't get a pair on the top here, but I got another one down there, which is for me very, very exciting. And when I look, I always check to see if I have any bugs in there. Because if I do, they are not long for this world. I'm not messing about with my angrecoids right by the hedge there. So let me just see if I take care of that right now. Because that bloom is definitely something to gawk at, in my opinion. Stephen's orchids, I babble, I ramble. She is so cute. I do have a picture of this in the sun. But when I had her there to take the picture, the leaves were heating up very, very quickly and I didn't want them to get scorched. So I put her back in the shade for the filming. I just gave her a little bit of a spray. She's also got lots of little side plantlets coming as well. Lovely little orchid. Takes up no space and does this once a year. Thank you, Stevens Orchids, for your support. Hope to see you on your channel. Hope to see more videos of your collection. And if you haven't happened to have already subscribed to Stevens Orchids, I will leave his channel link in the description. Go and have a look-see. We've already got one care collab out of the way, which worked out perfectly. Now let's get on to some more. Thank you, Steven, for your support. This one, we can film in the sun because it loves the sun. The question is, can we appreciate the beauty of these blooms of Mycoilus stylus ciliaris variety or steadii? Because I would like to dedicate them to Laura Martinez, Hoodlum 3151, Senorita G, and Ami Chast. I have four spikes at the moment. Out of all the growths that were developing when I was repotting her, getting her into this bowl earlier this year, I had about 11 growths and only four have manifested into blooming at this point in time. And the fourth one is tucked back here. Beautiful. Of course it is epidendrum or coilostylus season. I have to say that 
I love these blooms simply because they remind me of little vehicles that the wood fairies or the pixies would jump on board and ride have all their little races through the branches of an enchanted forest. That's what I see in these blooms. Beautifully fragrant as well. I have a beautiful lemony, citrus kind of a note to these guys. There is no doubt about it. It is lemon. There is no hint of powder or cream or anything like that. They are just very, very beautifully fragrant. And late afternoon, throughout the night, Super, super amazing. I still have one spike to come. That would make it five out of 11 growths, but oh well, five is better than what we had last year. Last year we had three. She's in her bowl. She's in her third phase of transition from initially lava rock, and I've been meaning to divide her, but there's so much lava rock still in the middle. I don't want to keep destroying her because this one's party trick is to grow new roots bang in the middle of summer, which would be August, the hottest time of year. Not a good time to be repotting, even though the roots say, hey, I'm growing, do it now. As I don't have any humidity, well, <laughs> I'm not touching any repots in August unless I can guarantee that the roots have to stay in the media as opposed to, you can see this one's a bit more rambling. Yeah, the roots start out exposed and then find their way into the media. So this one's doing really well after the little disturbance that it had earlier this year. And it's come up with four spikes so far. We're going to get a fifth one in the near future. But the four spikes on the go at the moment once more are for Laura Martinez, Hoodlum 3151, Senorita G and Amit Chab. I hope that you approve of my little selection to say thank you to you for your support here on my channel. Coilostylus ciliaris variety or Steadii is of course an orchid that I really love, otherwise I wouldn't have her in my collection and I'm really glad that I got her identified last year. And I have this opportunity to say thank you to the four of you with my four bloom spikes for your support here on my channel. Here's an orchid I am so happy to have back in my viewfinder. Oh, Neophenicia falcata. Seven spikes this year. Yippee, if I still could, I would be doing cartwheels around my patio. Seven spikes, but the first two have just reached a point that I can film them and dedicate them in their prime to Daniel M and Lorindak. So that would be these two right here. One right there and one down here, which still has to open a few of the buds. But as always, they look best when there's still a few buds to go. Oh, look at that. C for cute. <laughs> yeah, she's gonna be amazing. All these spikes, we're gonna see a lot more of her simply because as the spikes open, I will be taking clips. Spike number three is in a good, good stead to be filmed next. But for now, look at this beautiful pot of gorgeousness. Neophenicia falcata, spikes one and two. Thank you so very, very much, Daniel M. And Lorin Dak, I really appreciate that you are here on my channel, supporting me with your time watching my videos, commenting on occasions, would love to see a lot more of you, and I hope that you're doing well in your part of the world. I have my little Neo, little, well, she has exploded, let's just say, since I potted her up into self-water with Lekka and Ceramis. There's a nice little chunk of Ceramis clustered right around the middle of that root ball, and I am so happy I'm not re-mossing anymore. I know they look so much more elegant and much cuter when presented properly, and I wish I could do that. I just don't have it in me to do it twice a year. As I mentioned earlier in this video, I've got 20% humidity today with 35 degrees Celsius temperature and full on wind. Yeah, the amount of times that I am spraying sphagnum moss in the past made it so slimy so fast. So this is giving me so much more joy to be able to see her, not disturb her, and just let her get on with it. And what's not to like? As long as she's happy, as long as she's doing this for me. Oh, and her fragrance. 
Oh, the elegance and the exquisite fragrance of this orchid is something, something else. Late afternoon, early evening, let's say. If we say in summer, that would be like 8 p.m. That's when I start to know who is on my blooming alley. Together with my Parkinsoniana, these two at night are fighting for my attention and I'm happy to give it to them. <laughs> Oh well, I ramble, I babble. I don't want to waste your time too much. I just want to say thank you so much, Daniel M. and Lorin Dak for your support on my channel and dedicate my two first spikes of 2021 of my Neo Finisha Falcata to you. funny picture of this beautiful beautiful orchid to follow after i've talked about her and said thank you so much to jean chan for your support here on my channel so i had this orchid in the sun prior but just the pictures of getting a little bit of light on her gorgeous bloom were heating up the leaves and i wasn't comfortable with that so we are back in the shade but this after not seeing this bloom all of 2020, she's back. This is my Phalaenopsis Zeng Min, giraffe. <laughs> and that's the whole plant right there. There we go. Zeng Min, giraffe. She's back. One of my favorite, favorite fowls here in my summer blooming novelty hybrid collection. It goes without saying, I'm a massive, massive lover of giraffes. So, of course, when an orchid comes up with the name giraffe in it, I had to have it. There's also one called buffalo, but at the time, I didn't get a buffalo into my collection, so giraffe it was. And unfortunately, only one bloom. I was so excited because I had three buds. I had three buds, and then we had some serious, serious weather conditions, which includes hot wind, dry wind, etc all that good stuff that comes in the summer while you're babying your blooms and they blasted my buds blasted but she is so busy with other things i've got spikes coming in new ones she has grown two babies left and right of her the past year so i forgive her for not blooming last year she was busy reproducing in other ways <laughs> but even the babies are now pushing their own spike and as a matter of fact, the bloom that we have is on the other baby. The mother plant is also pushing spikes. This orchid has just got it going on. So one bloom, I am well pleased. I'm grateful. I really wanted to see this again. For Dean Chan, my Phalaenopsis Zeng Min giraffe. As you can see, not making it up. She smells of plastic. <laughs> I can't even say that she smells of flip-flop plastic. No, she just has a very plastic smell. Not waxy either. It's that industrial plastic smell. It's not unpleasant, but nah, that is not why I bought her for sure. <laughs> if it was the fragrance I was banking on, I would be majorly disappointed. I bought her for her beautiful colorings and her name, Giraffe. Jean Chan. My Phalaenopsis saying Min Giraffe, a single bloom, blooms for you. Thank you so very, very much. As I said, sunny photos coming up right now. A bit difficult to see, but there she is with a little bit of light coming through, highlighting the chartreuse petals and sepals. Epidendrum multiforme crossed with Capricornum. And um, here is a big brother. One of the originals, well, not a parent of this mix here, but still, we have two epidendrum right next to each other. And you can see how the blooms kind of resemble themselves. Very clear. Anyway, to me, what I want to say is thank you to all of you for watching. I hope everybody is enjoying their summer, staying safe, and I'm getting photobombed by a Coilostylus parkinsoniana. Meanwhile, please do stay safe. I appreciate your time and your support on my channel. 
Oh, and I just want to let you know that with this episode, probably two more episodes, I will have reached the list to December 2020, the list of names of Bloom dedications. So we will be coming into 2021 with the names very, very soon. Maybe the next episode will close that section off, but maybe it'll take two more. It all depends on what opens up next. I apologize for all the noise pollution that I could not edit out of this video. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody, and please, please stay safe. Take care. Bye.